Good afternoon, everyone. And today, I have something interesting to share with you all. Uh, YouTube user Johnny Holmes recommended that I try and play this Tron deck that placed 5-0 on a Moto League, as reported by MTG Goldfish. Um, and he was like, you should totally work out how this deck 5 0 Now, a few things about this deck. I'm going to show you the list in just a second, but I wanted you to see my face and understand that I'm being serious here. This is a very different green Tron list. This is not, not really meta by what I would, by my measurements here, we'll say that. Now, the list. This list is very different in several ways. Number one, no Karn Great Creator, no Wishboard at all. Number two, there was originally only 14 cards in the sideboard, not sure why, but I replaced one, I, I added a third Veil of Summer, so that's the only change I've made to this list. A few things that you may notice. We are playing 21 lands, not 18. We have an Urza's Factory to use the Tron lands for their intended purpose, which makes me feel weird. I don't think the Tron lands should be used for their intended purpose. I think they should be used to play Karn. This deck list is also running Hex Drinkers, two of, for a build your own progenitus threat. Also, we're playing four Explorers, which I guess explains the increase in forests. And then we're playing Jengatha, which means no walking ballista. <laughs> just, this is a very strange list, but I'm going to play it. Let's go. I'll see you guys in round one after I take a few sips off my rum and coke today because I've got a feeling I'm going to need it. Alrighty, round one, here we go. We are against Tarask 1, and we are on the draw. Let's go ahead and reveal one Elky boy. I don't know what a good hand looks like with this deck. It's so strange. Um, I think I have to mulligan. This, this list seems like it requires a green source. Uh, if we had natural Tron or turn 3 Tron, then maybe I would keep a hand like this, but we're going to mulligan. Well, we at least have a green source start. Um, I will keep... I'm going to put back a power plant. We're against some kind of deck playing basic planes, okay? Uh, so we'll start power plant, and we're going to go with star. Star gives us the most chances at drawing a second Tron piece prior to casting a Sylvan Scrying. All right, it is a Thalia deck. So, crack star for green, we draw another power plant. Play power plant. Now we can Ancient Stirrings, Expedition Map, or Chromatic Star. And I think the play is a two mana Chromatic Star here. Now, as long as my opponent does not have Leon and Arbiter, and cannot Ghost Quarter us effectively, okay, opponent Flicker Wisps, resetting Ghost Quarter, we untap, draw Big Papa Karn, Sack Star for green, draw an Expedition Map. I think the time now is Ancient Stirrings. I will take an Urza's Mine, rest of the bottom, play Urza's Mine, Pass the turn. This is a very hard-fought Tron, I imagine. Opponent attacks us for five. They're going to have to Ghost Quarter us here. Now, whether or not they have a Leon and Arbiter to play first... Okay. We're probably getting Resto Flickered here. Okay, opponent Ghost Quarters us on our draw step. We get a Forest. We play Urza's Factory... Play Expedition Map. So one benefit I'm already seeing to this is versus regular field effects, uh, like Field, Ghost Quarter, uh, Cleansing Wildfire, we're not going to run out of basics very quickly at all. But also, um, we have a lot of Explorers. So theoretically, we can make up the distance. But we're going to also have to do something probably next turn, or we're going to be in trouble. Get a Tower. I need, like, a Thrag Tusk here. Ancient Stirrings. Um, let's go ahead and Ancient Stirrings. Uh, Worm Coil does not actually do it. Take an Urza's Mine. Rest of the bottom. Play Tower. Play Map. Pass. Worm Coil doesn't do it because our opponent hits us for five, we go to three, and then can just attack over the top of Worm Coil. So I think my opponent having two Ghost Quarters is exactly what they needed. We go to three. Opponent plays third Ghost Quarter. 
Yeah, I don't think any Tron list can beat fast mana uh, Ghost Quarter. We will use Ghost Quarter's ability to get a forest. Then we will crack Expedition Map to get a tower. So we... Oh, <laughs> Explore costs three or we would be able to cast Ugin and win this game. Um, we can still cast Karn, though. So first thing we do, we do not play a land. We explore. Then we go mine, tower... Oh, we can't play Karn! Oh, we can't play Karn because we don't have enough mana because of Thalia. Although that is something to keep in mind. So if you're in a situation where your opponent has an active Ghost Quarter and you're playing a Tron list that has Explore, if you're holding the remaining two Tron lands, you need to cast Explore first, then play out your Tron lands because your opponent will not have priority. All right, this matchup, we definitely want the Thrag Tusks. Karn is not as good in this matchup. Hex Drinker, I imagine, is going to be pretty great. And if I if I fumble a little bit with this list, please bear with me, as it is very different, very different to play this list. I think Emrakul the Promised End can come out. And I think I'm going to cut one Karn Liberated. I think this list is trying to play a Tron list where assembling Tron directly is or where, uh, where not assembling Tron directly is okay. I'm going to keep this, and potentially you could assemble Tron on turn two with an Explorer, but you can't you can't use all seven of the mana until turn three. So we're going to start Urza's Tower, Chromatic Star, pass the turn. Opponent starts Aether Vial. We untap, draw Power Plant, Crack Star for green. Get a forest, play power plant, explore, play forest, play expedition map, pass the turn. We can have five mana next turn, unless we draw Urza's Mine, then we have eight. Opponent ticks up Vile to one, plays field, plays Revoker, names map, passes. We untap and draw Chromatic Sphere, play Sphere, crack Sphere for green, we draw Blast Zone, play Blast Zone. Tick up Blast Zone to two. Pass the turn. But like, look at this. We already have five mana, and field is field taking us off of Tron doesn't matter that much. My opponent can go Quarter us, but we have so many forests in this deck. Like, what are they going to do? So Sylvan Scrying. Opponent needs to activate in response. Aven Mind Sensor. Okay, so we're only going to look at the top few cards of our deck here. We still find a forest, play a forest, pass the turn, and next turn, no matter how much ghost quartering our opponent does, we're going to play a worm coil engine. Opponent attacks us for four. We get down to 14. Oh, I should have put Jengatha in my hand there. I did not. That was a mistake. Opponent plays Thalia. They ghost quarter blast zone. We find a forest. Oh my goodness. Mind sensor. Okay, they finally ghost quartered us. To where we can't play Worm Coil. If I had put Jengatha in my hand, I could cast Jengatha this turn, so that was actually a mistake. Um, we'll play Expedition Map and put Jengatha in our hand. Pass the turn. Opponent untaps. They probably keep Vial on three. Play a second Planes. Immediately field us. We dump a bunch of cards to the bottom. They play Planes, they attack, we un. Oh, they get a planes, we untap, we draw Chromatic Star, play a forest, play a 5-5, five, five, pass the turn. Yeah, I think if we were playing against a deck that allowed us to search and played this many Ghost Quarters, we'd be fine. Opponent attacks for two in the air, we untap, we draw Sylvan Scrying, so play... Oh, hang on. Mana can't be spent on generic costs, Okay. Play Chromatic Sphere, crack Sphere for green, draw Urza's Mine, play Urza's Mine, Sylvan Scrying, we'll get a Power Plant, pass the turn, leave Jengatha back on blocks, the opponent keeps a Vial on three, they play an Iganjo Castle and a Maul of the Skyclaves, and that will be the game. Wow, if we were playing a regular Tron list, we would have had no game. Um, and it's possible I could have done better game one, but that actually felt, even though we o 2 versus that opponent, that actually felt like we had a chance, and a real chance to win that game. Whereas I think a regular Tron list would not have. Alright, round two, here we go.
I would love to play first. Reveal Gengatha. Or Gen Gigantha. Because that's technically how those letters are ordered. So we'll keep this hand. I feel better about keeping a um, heavier hand in this list. Because I know we're going to play a lot more lands. In theory. So we'll start Power Plant. Play, play Chromatic Star. Pass the turn. Opponent untaps. Plays a Blooming Marsh into an Aether Vial. Okay. Not typically what we see in a deck that plays Blooming Marsh. So crack Chromatic Star for green. See what we draw. It's a tower. Play the tower. Sylvan Scrying. We'll get a Mine. Pass the turn. Opponent untaps. Ticks up Aether Vial to one. This kind of strikes me as like potentially maybe like an Eldrazi in Taxes deck. Or maybe this is that Yawgmoth deck that cycles a bunch of undying creatures infinitely. Uh, we'll play an Urza's Mine. Play an Expedition Map. Crack Expedition Map. We'll get another tower. And if our opponent can't interact with our lands, we're playing an Ulamog next turn. Okay, opponent vials in a one drop. It's a birds. They untap. Take up Vile to two. Black, black, red, white. It is the Yawgmoth deck. Okay. We untap. Draw forest. Play tower. Play Ulamog, exiling Yawgmoth, and Aether Vial. And that's the game. Okay, so versus this weird mono black deck, what do we want? Or not mono black, but this weird rock deck. What do we want? Let me think about this for a minute. This could be a place where we want O Stone. I think that's actually kind of reasonable. Um, I think Wilt is also okay, and probably we want Relics. So what comes out in this matchup? I think Emrakul is out. I think Ulamog is out. Even though Ulamog is quite good in the general sense, uh, and we just won with it, I think it's going to be a little bit slow on average, even with all of the exploring we're doing. Um, Ugin definitely stays in. I think we need the heavy board wipe. I don't think this is where we want a Hex Drinker. Maybe we can cut a Worm Coil. I think I'm willing to cut... In this case, Sanctum of Ugin will go down one land. Because if I'm not tutoring for Ulamog or Emrakul, I don't think I'm going to tutor for a Worm Coil. Because if I'm casting one of these, I'm already winning. And, you know, I'm only going to run one Wilt, because it's probably only good versus their Aether Vial start, so... Okay. Reveal Gigantha. Six Sigma, I know you were yelling at me game one. Okay, yeah, natural... not natural Tron, but uh, turn three Tron, Karn. Hopefully good enough. Opponent starts Overgrown Tomb. Thoughtseize. Well, they can take Sylvan Scrying or Chromatic Sphere, and that would take us off of Green and take us off of Tron. Or they could take Karn Liberated and try and take us off of a threat. But my opponent mulliganed to six and started Land Thoughtseize. I think if I was my opponent, I would probably take Sphere here. But we're also playing a non-typical non list of Tron. Sylvan Scrying is absolutely fine. That was like the other one that I think is reasonably considered. The only thing about Sphere is Sphere is a redraw in addition, but I think if my opponent didn't know what version of Tron I was playing, they should have taken Sphere. If my opponent did know what version of Tron I was playing, they should have taken uh, Sylvan Scrying. Did I say that right? I think I said that right. So, crack Sphere for green, Ancient Stirrings. We find another power plant, there's also a Relic. And a forest. I'm gonna take the forest here. We're gonna play the forest and we're gonna ancient stirrings and try and hit mine. We did not hit mine. I'm gonna take expedition map now. Now the reason that I played forest instead of the Urza's tower there was if I had drawn a mine off of that ancient stirrings I could then play explore and then play both my other Tron pieces. Okay they name expedition map. And they play a blood artist and an overgrown tomb tapped. We untap, draw a forest. So let's explore. We draw Karn Liberated, play Forest, play Urza's Tower, and we'll play Expedition Map because Phyrexian Revoker should die at some point. 
All we need is a single land now, and we can still play Thrag Tusk. I actually really am starting to like Explorer on the higher land count. Um, we're not as soft to Blood Moon. Like, there's some real potential in this list. Uh, let me see, who who is the originator? Mogged. The Moto user Mogged. M-O-G-G-E-D. Capital M. Uh, I think you've done some really clever innovating here, so much appreciated. Now, if we could top deck Urza's mine, that'd be amazing. Might as well put Gigantha in our hand. Pass the turn. We just need one land. Like, one land and we start playing Thrag Tusks to stabilize. Opponent Eldritch Evolution, Sacking Birds. They get a Giralf's Messenger. Okay. They're going to hit us for four. Well, we really need a way to deal with that Yawgmoth. So Urza's Mine would be great, but any land would buy us some time. And if we don't draw land here, I think we're dead. They sack Revoker, resetting Messenger. Messenger drains us for two. They can sack Blood Artist. Wow, they actually killed us. They got us Xaxes. All right. Pretty awesome there, opponent. Pretty awesome. Uh, I don't think we I don't think we swap it up. I think we run it back as is. We're actually not as soft to Thoughtseize as I think the regular Tron list is. I'm seeing benefits. I'm just I I'm not in a position where I can take advantage of them right now. All right. So we're gonna keep this hand. We're gonna start Power Plant Expedition Map. Pass the turn. Opponent untaps. They drop to seven. They play a forest into an Aether Vial. Okay, we untap, we draw a forest, play a forest, and I think I'm going to go for the Wilt here. This is potentially bad because if my opponent has a Phyrexian Revoker and exactly a Phyrexian Revoker naming Expedition Map, we're kind of dead in the water. Um, yep. Oh. Alright, well, we're going to have to rely on Explorer here. Play a forest. Go ahead and explore. Play a forest, play a map. Now, I'm kind of wondering, would Karn Great Creator be better in a list like this with the Explorer? I think not playing Great Creator is a mistake, but that might have been a limitation of my opponent's list. Like, maybe they just didn't have the money for Great Creator and this was the best list they could come up with it. Um, in which case, this list still feels like fine. It's not, it's not a problem in any way. We untap, draw Ugin. Yeah, I needed to crack map. Um, so that, I think, was a play mistake, but I don't know if that's hindsight or not. Um, I kind of assumed that Phyrexian Revoker was like a one or a two of creature out of the sideboard, but I don't know if my opponent's deck actually plays the main deck or not. If I knew that, I may have played differently, but I've only seen this deck once. I've got requested to play it. I have the cards. I just, I am not good with it at all. Oh, man. O-Stone's not even good here, because all their threats are undying. <laughs> like, ugh. And they have a Blood Artist. O-Stone might just kill us. But we're learning, we're learning. So, like, even if I even if I 5 this league, we are going to get insights into how this deck list works, and we may be able to improve upon it, or we may understand how to play it for next time, both of which would be adequate, in my opinion. Like, I'm, I'm not upset that I'm losing these at all, because I'm, I'm learning a lot here. Oh yeah, we're dead. That's just the infinite combo. Two Undying creatures plus Yawgmoth. Um, they can reset the Undying. Alright, so we're 0-2, but that's okay. Um, like I said, I'm actually really excited to see a list like this exist. I think the um, I think the Explorers and 21 land count are actually really, really good. Alright, round three, here we go. Alright, we'll play first. Reveal Gigantha. So, uh, one thing that I'm noticing that I, I've just kind of become self-aware of, I'm less comfortable mulliganing with this deck, mainly because, though like the, the traditional Tron hands that it can have are good, I don't want to give up uh, the card advantage off of like Explorers and things. I want to... Um, I want to play with the most cards in hand right now to ensure that I have the lands for explorers, is what I'm trying to say. Um, sorry, I had a beard hair in my mouth and it was, or like maybe that was dog hair, I'm not sure. Um, so it's possible that like, if I took slightly more aggressive mulligans, we may have better luck 
Like, I'm not... I am in no way maximizing my ability to play this deck right now. Mainly because, as I've stated several times, I have no idea how to play this version. And many of you may say, but Kano, it's basically Tron. Just play it like you would play Tron. I would argue that this list is very different and takes multiple considerations every single turn. Alright, so we're probably against Luris Shadow here. They start Marsh Flats. They play a Blood Crypt. They play a Swift Spear. So I think my opponent accidentally passed through their first main phase. So let's crack Sphere for green. Draw Tower. Play Sphere. Play Tower. Crack Sphere again. Ancient Stirrings. Okay, Expedition Map. Rest to the bottom. Pass the turn. As long as our opponent doesn't have Hand Hate, if we can either top deck Power Plant, we can play Worm Coil right away, or we can play Expedition Map, crack and go get Power Plant. Opponent plays Bloodstain Mire. Second Swift Spear. They play a Bobble, they get some Prowess Triggers. And they crack Bobble. They attack us for four. We go down to 16. We untap, opponent draws a card. I think they bobbled themselves, and that's why they didn't crack Bloodstain Mire. We draw Blast Zone. So play Blast Zone, play Expedition Map. Uh, and I'm just going to crack Map now and get Power Plant. Pass the turn. So we can play Worm Coil, we can follow up by blowing up all the one drops. We have options. Opponent fetches and shocks Blood Crypt, then untaps. They thought sees us. Ooh. All right. Well, we're probably just cracking Blast Zone next turn. Opponent has to take our only non-land card in hand. And they're hitting us for at least four. They play Bomb at Courier. Why would you play Bomb at Courier when I just played a Blast Zone? Maybe they're just trying to get in as much damage as they can and follow up with like a Scourge of the Skyclaves. I guess that's really the only thing that makes sense to me. So play Power Plant. I'm just going to sack Blast Zone now, and we'll put G uh, Gigantha in our hand. Like, technically waiting is something I could do on that Blast Zone, because my opponent does have um, the potential to play out a Swift Spear or something. Uh, I don't want to give them the option, and I don't, like, if their hand is just, like, a bunch of unplayable cards, I don't want them to have the option of attacking with Bomb at Courier and then... Um, cracking it to draw cards. Alright. Well, we kind of need a Karn, Ugin, or Worm Coil, I guess might do it. That I don't think will. So we're going to play Gigantha as a... just as a chump blocker, basically. Um, at this point, we could top deck Ulamog, but if my opponent has a Team or Battle Rage, we're dead. Okay, opponent attacks us for eight. Team or Battle Rage. All right, we go ahead and concede. Okay, so versus Red Black Shadow, I think I want Nature's Claims. With this many forests and the ability to play Explorers, I think I kind of want Veil of Summer. I normally don't bring it in that often versus Black Decks. The times that I have, it's felt like it's been the incorrect choice to do. Um, I probably should bring in Wilts as well. I'm going to cut Emrakul. I don't think Emrakul is very good versus our opponent's deck. Um, man, what do we cut? I think Hexdrinker is too likely to die. My opponent has too many burn spells, and their creatures are going to be bigger most of the time. Hexdrinker... I don't know when this card is good. I... I imagine in some scenario that I'm not thinking of right now, it is, but I don't know when that is. I am going to cut, oof, I am going to cut, I think, Urza's Factory here. I'm still going to keep 20 lands, but I think I'm comfortable taking one land out with how much I'm bringing in, especially a colorless land that, on average, is not good unless we have Tron, because I think my opponent is going to be playing Blood Moon, which tells me I probably want Oblivion Stone and I probably want Wilt. I just don't know what to take out of this deck. Maybe I don't play Veil of Summer. Maybe it's better to just play the the Wilts. I'll go down one Karn, and I think I'll go down I'll go down one Thragtusk, actually. 
So we'll bring in one Thrag Tusk. Try it like this. And please, please, if you if you play a Tron list similar to this one and you watch my channel, or you have watched the creator play this Tron list or other people play this list, please, in the comments below, tell me what I'm sideboarding wrong, what I'm sideboarding correctly. If you see me making mistakes, if you think I should be mulliganing more aggressively, please let me know. Because I like playing new variations of stuff, and I don't always know how. Just like Aspiring Spikes list, I had I had plenty of constructive feedback on that list, and I'm super thankful that I got it. We're going to keep Natural Tron plus Chromatic Star Ancient Stirrings, because um, hopefully that will find us a threat. Um, I, had, I had plenty of good feedback, like I was told that I shouldn't ever be cutting Blood Sun in that list, um, because Aspiring Spike says that that's incredibly important, etc. So, if you have constructive if it's just like, Kano lol, you're an idiot, if it's said in a loving way, I'll take it, but if it's, if you're just being insulting, I'm not going to respond to you. Um, I do get, occasionally get some um, some not so kind feedback, but if your feedback's constructive, I'll do my best to respond to you. Okay, so opponent starts Marsh Flats cracks. They get a Blood Crypt. They play Swift Spear. Bobble. Okay. Crack Bobble. Attack us for two. We take two, go to eighteen. We untap. They draw a card. Draw Expedition Map. Well, we're probably not going to need that this game. Sack Star for green. Draw another Urza's Mine. Ancient Stirrings. Take Chromatic Star. Rest of the bottom. Play out Chromatic Star. Pass the turn. We just need to draw a threat. Opponent Thought Seizes. So they have to take Expedition Map. They see that we have all Tron lands. Or all lands, basically. When it bolts our face, they're just going to try and race us down, I guess. Okay. When it hits us for three, we go down to 12. We could almost just put Jengatha in our hand, or Gigantha. We draw Ugin. Players is tower. Crack star for green. Leaving up mana for explore. Okay. Add Gigantha to our hand. Pass the turn. Kind of hoping our opponent taps out for, like, Scourge of the Skyclaves. Like, Fetch Shock, Scourge of the Skyclaves, Death Shadow, and then we can play Ugin and just rock our opponent. They Fetch with Bloodstain Mire. They Shock a Blood Crypt. They play Reign of Gore, which we don't particularly care about that much. I guess it would matter if we had a Thrag Tusk that we top decked. Now, don't have another Thought Seize. Okay. They attack us for two. We go to ten. They play Death Shadow. Perfect. Untap. Draw Worm Coil. Players is mine. I don't think Reign of Gore works against Lifelink, actually. I think Reign of Gore only works for other things that say you gain X life. So play an Ugin. Minus two. Exile all of my opponent's non-land permanents. Pass the turn. Opponent untaps, they draw. They play a Swamp. They play Death Shadow. Okay. Well, we can't plus Ugin to kill Death Shadow because my opponent can just tap Sunbaked Canyon to lose a life. Draw Ancient Stirrings. Play a Forest. Play Ancient Stirrings. Get an Expedition Map, I guess. Rest of the bottom. Minus one Ugin. And then we'll play a Worm Coil. Pass the turn. Opponent Kuligon's Command. Picking up... I think they pick up something and then... Destroy Worm Coil Engine. Oh no, they didn't. They did two damage to Ugin to take him to two. Well, they're currently staring at Lethal, so... Opponent plays a Bomb at Courier. They attack Ugin. They exile a card. Block with the Life Linking Worm. They crack Bomb at Courier to draw, so we don't gain any life. But it plays a Croxa, so we just discard Expedition Map plus Ugin, hit our opponent, and then hit them for six and they die. Okay, discard Expedition Map. Alright, opponent concedes. Um, yeah, I think we just keep it the way it is. Run it back.
All right, reveal Gigantha. Um, it's a hand that assembles Tron, and we have Nature's Claim for a potential Blood Moon. I think I'm going to keep. Yeah, we'll keep. Okay, Pota starts Blood Crypt. They shock Blood Crypt. And we start Bombat Courier, all right. Okay, exile a card. We draw a Power Plant. So, new plan. Players is mine. Play Chromatic Star. And we're going to go for a Nature's Claim play, I think. Rather than try and get to the 10 mana for Ulamog immediately. Because we should be able to play map on a later turn, in theory. So if my opponent attacks and then plays like a Scourge of the Skyclaves or a Reign of Gore... I guess Reign of Gore, we'd actually help them if we claimed uh, the Bombat Courier, but... They play a Swift Spear, and they go to combat. They attack for two, and bolt our face. We go to 16. Okay, we untap. We draw Wilt. Play Power Plant. Crack Star for green. Draw Mine. Claim Courier. They go up to 19. Play Expedition Map. Pass the turn. Opponent untaps. They shock with Blood Crypt. Three mana. I mean, if it's a Blood Moon, we still have a Wilt. Coligon's Command. They're going to destroy map and force us to discard. Um, we'll discard mine, I think. They hit us for two. We go down to 11. We untap. Draw Karn. Play Tower. Play Karn. Opponent only has two cards in hand, so I'm going to uptick. This basically means Karn can't be killed unless they have a Dread Boar. Or like a Hero's Downfall, but I don't think they play Hero's Downfall. And Dread Boar is only kind of in edge cases. We get Inquisition, so opponent takes Wilt. They bolt our face. Opponent is now going all out aggression. We're going to five. We draw Wilt. So play Blast Zone. Crack Blast Zone. Kill Swift Spear. Cycle Wilt. Okay, uptick Karn Liberated on ourself. Exiling Ulamog. And we're going to get the Karn restart. Opponent has to draw something they can use to damage Karn. And they have to damage Karn or they have to kill us. And we're going to restart the game with an Ulamog and play the top deck of land. <laughs> All right, we untap. Draw Expedition Map. Restart the game. Uh, yeah, I'll keep this. Start with an Ulamog. Oh, we got the Karn restart. Uh, don't you just love it when you take Cthulhu back in time to kill your opponent? Start Urza's Tower. <laughs> yeah, I, I imagine we win. Oh, that was dope. All right, I'll see you guys in round four. All right, round four, reveal Gigantha. Uh, turn three, Worm Coil. Turn four, Ugin. I will keep. Put it starts Forest. Noble Hierarch, okay. Start Urza's Mine. Play Expedition Map past the turn. All right, this is the red-green Eldrazi deck. Players this power plant past the turn. So I guess if my opponent has a Thought Knots here, they can take us off of Worm Coil, and Ugin is not going to be as good of a board wipe. Reality Smasher here would hurt a lot. Okay, it's a Thought Knots here. Opponent gets to look at her hand. All right, they do take Worm Coil Engine. When it attacks us for four, we go down to 16. Get a tower, untap, draw forest, play forest, explore, play tower, play chromatic star, Crack for green. We really need to draw another Tron piece of some kind. We get a Chromatic Sphere, Ancient Stirrings, um, Urza's Mine, rest of the bottom, and play Chromatic Sphere. So we're going to follow this up with Ulamog, unless my opponent has a second Thought Knot Seer, which is possible and would be quite punishing. Okay, opponent hits us for seven. We go down to nine. 
Okay, opponent is tapping for something. Clothis. And a Valakut Stoneforge. Interesting choice of cards. Play an Urza's Mine. Play an Ulamog. Nuke Thought Knot and Clothis. We get to draw. Sylvan Scrying. Play Ulamog. Pass the turn. Opponent untaps. Mattery Shaper, Mattery Shaper. Okay. We untap. We draw Explore. Play Sanctum. Play Ugin. Sack Sanctum. Get a Worm Coil Engine. Shoot down a Mattery Shaper. See what our opponent reveals. Thought Not Seer. Okay. So we'll Sylvan Scrying. Actually, hang on. Sack Sphere for green. Second Worm Coil. Sylvan Scrying. We'll get a Redundant Tower. Play Star. An opponent can Thought Not Seer to take out one of our Worm Coils, but we have a Redundant one, so we should be fine. We're not attacking. We are keeping Ulamog on defense, as weird as that sounds. We are at risk of taking a lot of damage if my opponent has like a Kessig Wolf run or something like that. There's also one of the small Eldrazi can actually, I think, steal an attacker. Eldrazi Obligator or something like that. I don't know if it can steal only small creatures or if it can hit Ulamog. Um, but it has haste, I just realized, so I don't know. We might be actually totally boned if they draw that card. Opponent attacks us for four. We are going to block with Ulamog. Opponent reveals a Cavern of Souls. Puts it into play. Okay. We untap. Draw Forest. Sack Star for green. We get a Hex Drinker. Play an Urza's Tower. Play Hex Drinker. Level up. Level up. Level up. Level up. Level up. Level up. Plus Ugin, kill matter reshaper. When it gets to reveal a card. Grove of the Burn Willows. Okay. And I think it's safer to play Worm Coil than it is to level up Hex Drinker all the way. Go to combat. We are going to attack with Ulamog this time. Opponent exiles 20 cards. Eldrazi Obligator. Yep, so that's what we have to watch out for if we have a Ulamog in play. We exiled two of them. Opponent does not block, they take 10. Okay, we hit them for 10. Second main phase, play Worm Coil. Pass the turn. Opponent plays Grove, no attacks. We untap. Let's go ahead and start with an Explore. Put Gigant in her hand. Alt Ugin. Put a new Ugin, a Karn, Gigantha, Sphere, Star, Tower, Tower into play. Oh, I'm glad I could mute for that sneeze. All right. So versus the Eldrazi deck, Probably want O stones um, and Thrag tusks, maybe. Go down Emmercool. I don't know that Hex Drinker is going to be good, so I think I cut Hex Drinker here, and I'm going to cut, I think, just a regular forest. We'll try it like this. Maybe we want to keep the forest because of a potential Blood Moon, but I haven't seen my opponent's list for I don't know how long. Okay, reveal Gigantha. Um, we're on the draw. Sphere Star Forest. Uh, Sphere Star Forest Expedition Map make this hand good. So that's 8 plus 5 plus 4. This is like 21 cards we could draw. <laughs> Almost. No, 17. I did the math wrong. 17 cards out of our 53 remaining cards make this hand excellent. I think I risk it for that. Opponent plays Prismatic Vista. 
Opponent plays a Noble Hierarch. Ancient Stirrings is one of the cards we didn't want to draw. Pass the turn. We get another chance. Oh, and mine. So yeah, 21 cards. Opponent plays a Eldrazi Temple. So this looks like a Thought Knot Seer. That is one thing, is the red-green Eldrazi deck does maximize on playing their 4-mana Eldrazi on turn 2. Opponent takes Ancient Stirrings. Interesting choice. We untap. Draw an Urza's Mind, play Power Plant, pass the turn. They did not take Karn like I thought they would. I guess as long as they don't have Reality Smasher, we're probably okay. They play Cavern Naming Elf. Second Thought Not Seer. Okay, this time they take Karn, 100%. We need to draw green mana ASAP. Opponent hits us for 5, we're going to go down to 15. I'd love to draw a Sphere or a Star here. Okay, they're going to hit us for 6 because they're playing a second Noble Hierarch. Okay. They hit us for 6, we go down to 14, untap. We draw Expedition Map. So Players is mine. Play Expedition Map. Whoops. Play Expedition Map. Crack Map will get a second tower. Because if my opponent has the third Thought Not Seer, I think we just have to give it to them. But if they don't, we're going to uh, Ulamog and Exile both Thought Not Seers. We are taking eight and going to six, though. Opponent hits us for eight. We go to six. Matter Reshaper. Okay. We untap. Draw Sylvan Scrying. Play Tower. Play Ulamog. Hit the Thought Knot Seers. We get to draw two cards. Chromatic Star. Excellent. Chromatic Star. Excellent. Pass the turn. Then we just have to survive a turn and then we can play out a Thrag Tusk. My opponent did not name. Eldrazi on that Cavern of Souls, so they don't have red mana if they do draw an Eldrazi Obligator. Opponent attacks into an indestructible Eldrazi with Matter Reshaper, presumably because they really need to draw. Well, we got a block. Opponent finds a Grove of the Burn Willows to put into play. We untap, draw Sylvan Scrying, play Chromatic Star. Crack star for green, see what we draw. Sanctum of Ugin. I have not played a land yet. I could Sylvan Scrying for another tower, or I could get a Blast Zone. I think we just... Let's Sylvan Scrying for another tower, and then we'll play Thrag Tusk. Well, actually, play Sanctum. Play Thrag Tusk. <laughs> Gain five life. Play Chromatic Star. Crack Star for green. Draw Nurse is mine. Sylvan Scrying. Get a basic forest. Go to combat. And attack for 10. Exile the top 20 cards of my opponent's deck. See if we can't hit their Eldrazi Obligators so that they have no hope. The opponent has Alpine Moon. And Stone Rain, we hit one Obligator. Opponent gains us a life to add red mana. They change their mind. Okay, they bolt us after gaining us a life. So they effectively shocked us. Opponent plays an Eldrazi Temple and passes. We untap. Draw is mine. Play a Forest. Explore. Get an Ugin. Play Ugin, Sack Sanctum, get a Worm Coil, Uptick Ugin, kill Noble Hierarch, Players is mine, go to combat, attack for 10 only, just in case they do draw Eldrazi Obligator, we have Thrag Tusk back to block. Just say, I should have actually added Gigantha to my hand, uh, that was technically a misplay. I don't think that will be relevant, when it shocks us again. Because that's what happens when you bolt your opponent's face off of a Grove of the Burn Willows. I guess if they have another Lightning Bolt and a Reality Smasher, they might be able to kill us. But opponent scoops the match. We are 2-2 two and two going into the final round, and I will see you there. Alrighty, round 5. <clears throat> uh, 
YouTube user Tomer Willem, Wilhelm uh, just let me know that uh, on my Vintage Cube video, I think that went up yesterday, I lost in uh, the first game in round two because I brainstormed with only two cards left in my library. <laughs> um, <laughs> which explains a lot. <clears throat> anyway, let's focus on the game at hand. Round five. Four lands, two-thirds of Tron, uh, one redraw of Chromatic Sphere. I think I am going to keep this. Start Power Plant, Chromatic Sphere, pass the turn. All right, opponent's first turn. They start Misty Rainforest and pass. We draw another Urza's Tower. Sack Sphere for green. We get an Explore. Play Tower. Explore. Okay, opponent cracks Misty and finds. Probably a Triome. This is probably a row. Oh, Breeding Pool untapped. Opt, maybe? Spell Snare. Okay. I think what this is is the Saltai or Simic Nexus Uro deck. Pona plays Misty and passes. We untap and draw Explore. So play Forest. Explore. I mean, if my opponent is just going to sit there and counter Explorers, I'm happy to keep playing out lands. <clears throat> and then eventually play like Threats. Opponent gets a basic island into a remand. Okay, pass the turn. Opponent untaps. They play a steam vents, tapped. Yeah, I still think this is a row. Draw a third Urza's Tower. Explore. Another remand. Okay. Play tower, pass the turn. <clears throat> Opponent untaps. They play Red and Six, pick up a Misty, play Misty, pass, we untap, draw Chromatic Sphere, play an Explore. Purposefully, we're not playing around Mana Leak, because if my opponent Mana Leaks, I want them to counter this. I don't want them to counter. They're picking up another Remand, okay? So they Remand, drawing Remand. Play Urza's Tower, play Chromatic Sphere. Crack Sphere for green, we draw Thrag Tusk, and explore, getting an Urza's Mine. Um, we'll play Urza's Factory, and pass the turn. <clears throat> so we know our opponent is holding Remand. They pick up Misty. So my opponent can play Misty, uh, they can get a Mystic Sanctuary, and they can Remand, drawing Remand again. Okay, they play uh, Mystic Sanctuary out of hand, so my opponent has effectively is holding two Remands. We untap, we draw Expedition Map, Players is mine, and let's go Thrag Tusk. Okay, opponent remands Thrag Tusk. So what we're going to do, make an Assembly Worker, and play out Expedition Map. Okay, opponent lets Expedition Map resolve. Pass the turn. I will say that through an infinite counterspell deck, the Urza's Factory feels pretty nice. Okay, opponent bolts our face. <clears throat> They're still holding a remand. They're going to play Misty this turn. I don't know if they have a third Mystic Sanctuary or not. Well, they just picked up their other Misty Rainforest. They play Misty. We untap. We draw Thrag Tusk. Go to combat. Attack Renin 6. Renin 6 goes to 4. Play Karn. They remand Karn. Play Thrag Tusk, playing around Mana Leak. Thrag Tusk resolves. And did I play a land this turn? I have not. Crack Expedition Map. We are going to get a... Sanctum of Ugin, and play it. Pass the turn. So my opponent is a ways away from, like, ulting Ren and time warping us to death or anything like that. They fetch up a forest. They have something for our end step then? They bolt our face. Well, bolting our face is not super effective when we've gained as much life as we have. They ping us with Ren and Six. Valakut. Are we dead to scapeshift? Really? Opponent has seven lands, that's exactly 18 damage? Wow. 
They get six mountains, three damage each. That is exactly lethal. Wow, that's really frustrating. So it looks like my opponent is actually um, Team or Scape Shift and not necessarily just like Uro Omnath. Okay, well, we are going to play differently. So versus our opponent, we're bringing in three Veil of Summer. I don't think we need Relic. I don't think we need Nature's Claim, and I don't think we need Wilt. Uh, it's possible we do want Thrag Tusk. I think it's actually better than Worm Coil here because the immediate life gain does matter. Um, Ember Cool is great. We're going to drop the Hex Drinkers and run it back. We're going to play kind of a, a more traditional Tron list here. <clears throat> I'll play first. Reveal Gigantha. Um, we have Chromatic Star, Chromatic Sphere, Ancient Stirrings. I think this hand is okay. With the number of redraws and the Ancient Stirrings, I think this is actually fine. So I'm going to keep this. It is a little bit slower, and there is some risk, but hopefully between all of the draw steps we're going to get to where we need to go. So starters is mine. Play Chromatic Sphere. Pass the turn. Honestly, with this many lands and explorers, I kind of want Besiege you. Want to play Stomping Ground tapped. We untap. We draw Sylvan Scrying. Crack Sphere for green. We get another Sylvan Scrying. So players is mine. Sylvan Scrying, we'll go get Power Plant. Pass the turn. When it plays a Scalding Tarn, passes. Draw Chromatic Sphere, so play Power Plant. Play Sphere. Crack Sphere for green. We're going to go for the Sylvan Scrying. Odds are my opponent has a counter spell, but get a tower. So the way that they're playing tells me that they probably have a Cleansing Wildfire that we're going to have to look out for. If they don't have a 2-mana counter spell... They play an island into an Uro. They play a Misty. Okay, so they could have um, they could have the spell that counters a uh, colorless spell. So play Tower, play Star, crack it for green and draw. Ancient Stirrings. Uh, we're gonna go for an Ugin. I really hope my opponent does not have a Ceremonious Rejection. Shoot our opponent for three. Pass the turn. I don't think they can kill us in two turns, but with Uro, who knows. The problem is I'm now out of green mana because of how I used my stars. I probably should have just played out the or played out Ugin and then played out the star. Yeah, I think not saving that for Ancient Stirrings was is or Thrag Tusk is actually something that could potentially kill us here. We do have a second Ugin. I don't think that that's helpful here, but one of growth spirals. Yeah, anticipate us just dying to escape shift. They shock stomping ground. They play Renin 6. They uptick Renin 6. Picking up Misty. We untap. We draw Veil of Summer. Which doesn't do anything. Play an Urza's Mine. We get down tick to handle Renin 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Uptick on Ren. I guess we have to be on the Ugin ultimate plan, but there's a really good chance we're just dead. Had I saved that star, I could play Thrag Tusk this turn. Opponent shocks us, Steam Vents. Bolts are fit. Yeah, we're dead. <clears throat> if my opponent plays Misty and just casts Scape Shift, we die, which is so unfortunate. But I think Scape Shift has, in general, a pretty good match versus uh, Tron. Because they play Remands and the kinds of counter spells that are very good against Tron's threats. So they crack Misty. They get a Forest. So technically I did misplay. Because I could have had five more life than I did. Man, it's been a long time since I've died to a traditional uh, escape shift list. Yep, an opponent knows to get only one Valakut. Wow. Yep. Well, we get 50 play points because we did two and three. Uh, I think I will try this list again, maybe making some minor tweaks. Let's go ahead and talk about this list for a little bit. Okay. So, personally, I have never been a fan of Emrakul as one of the game-ending threats. I don't... I just don't like it. It doesn't straight win you the game. Uh, it relies on your opponent's hand being good against itself. Like, I, I don't like it. I would prefer that that would be another Ulamog, but that's my personal preference. I know a lot of people actually enjoy um, 
playing a uh, an Emrakul the Promised End. Hex Drinker, I think I, I I would cut Emrakul, I would cut Hex Drinker, and I would play Karn Great Creator. I like having an actual sideboard, but at the same time, I think just not playing Karn Great Creator is incorrect. I liked the twenty one lands plus Explorers. I I I think versus Blood Moon decks versus um repeated ghost quarter effects which we kind of saw in round one versus the thalia death and taxes list um i think it's actually really good to help recover from that and because we're in such a meta that's so full of blood moon and stuff right now to help try and fight the uro omnath decks this might be a way you could go um i definitely see why at 5 owed and it does have some power I like having the full sideboard again, but I don't. I still think it's correct to play Karn Liberate or Karn Great Creator. I think if I was going to play this list, what I would do is I would go down to one Worm Coil Engine in the main. I would cut Hex Drinker and I would cut Emrakul and I would play four Karn Great Creator and a second Ulamog. Then out of the side, I would swap out. Uh, I wouldn't play Gigantha. I don't think it's ever worth really playing this. Um, in, in a list with 21 lands, it's a little bit different because sometimes you'll run out of stuff to do and just playing a 5-5 five five is going to be good enough if you run up against like Burn or something. But I don't think Gigantha is ever worth the slot. I've never had a good experience with it. Um, and if you're like me, you're also going to constantly forget it's a thing you can do. So I would cut Gigantha and then I would probably just like make, uh, remake the like traditional sideboard plan. But I like having the high land count plus explorers. I think that's I think that's really neat. Yeah, and I, I guess I don't really have that much else to say about it right now. I will be playing another list similar to this. I think I'm going to make my own modifications to it. So let me know what you guys think. Do you know a better way to sideboard with this? Was I making a ton of punts this entire game? Um, let me know what you think. I would be happy to hear any constructive feedback on this particular list. So... If you like this video, please leave a like, drop a comment, subscribe to the channel if you're so inclined. Remember, you can also follow me on Twitch, same username over there as you find me on here. I stream Wednesdays at 6 p.m. Mountain Time, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. The last few have been a little bit early, and I'm going to update this when I have a regular schedule again. But uh, yeah, I hope to see you there, and I hope you guys had a good one, and you're all wonderful people, and thanks for watching. Bye!